Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Banyan Hypnosis Center. Once again, uh, I hope you got part one. If you didn't get part one, please go to calbanyan.com or banyanhypnosismall.com and click on the Meet the Pros link. Uh, if you've been following along so far, you know that I managed to uh, get Roy Hunter to come over here. He just happened to be on vacation, and uh, I talked to him yesterday on the phone, and I says, gosh, i got to get you over here and uh, do a video with you and get you to share some of your knowledge with uh, our visitors. So that's why we're not in our usual uh, tie and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this, this is uh, Roy's vacation time, so thank you so much for coming and, and, and hanging in here for part two. Um, for you guys that, uh, that maybe didn't he see part one, I want to tell you that Roy Hunter is a very well-known and successful hypnotherapist in the profession. He's been very important in, uh, uh, in throughout the last you know, 10, 20 years in the profession. He's been recognized by the National Guild with many awards, as well as by many other hypnosis organizations. Uh, his practice is in Washington State, and uh, he just happened to be down here in California. I think they were visiting Disneyland when I talked to him on the phone yesterday. Nice. So, good. Um, what we're going to do today, and in this part two, is Roy has a, a certain approach for booking appointments. And uh, although I'm, I'm a lot into marketing, and Maureen, my wife and general manager, does a lot of our telephone sales, and uh, you probably saw the, the, the part that we did last week with her. I'm very excited to have Roy talk about his approach for, for booking appointments. And I'm sure I'm going to learn a thing or two and, uh, and have Maureen watch this so we can do even a better job. Okay, with that, Roy, um, why don't you introduce the subject and, uh, and tell us all about it. Give us some tips, tricks, and techniques and what you do. Well, first of all, I'm sure a lot of you have tried various techniques to get the phone to ring in the first place. And any of you who share my struggles with marketing understand that once that phone rings, it's really important that you make the most of every opportunity because anytime your phone rings, that's an opportunity. If you break it down according to how many calls you get within a given month and divide the calls uh, into the total amount of money you make from sessions in a given month, you can actually put a monetary value on each phone call. I can tell you've had sales training because the salesmen often do that. They'll, yes. they'll, 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 they'll be very almost hardcore about this and it's math. I mean, dollars is math and it's how many calls, how many you close, how many you book. And you can actually research and use different techniques and find which ones are working better. And, and I know you have a sales background, so uh, I'm really yes. excited about hearing your, your information. Well, I spent a decade in the insurance industry and also spent a couple of years mm. with Litton Industries selling business machines before I learned hypnotherapy from the late Charles Tebbets back in 1983. Mm -hmm. And in the sales profession, I found out people buy benefits not price, although when people shop for a product or a service, they frequently shop price. So your typical prospective client of hypnotherapy is going through the yellow pages, if that's the uh, medium that they're using to find you, and they're going through a whole list of prospective hypnotherapists, whether they've uh, done this out of the phone book, or whether they've gotten several names off the internet. Mm -hmm. and Typically, the first question many clients will ask is, um, do you do stop smoking or weight control or yada, 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 whatever the specific request mm -hmm. is? And after you give them a yes or a no, uh, invariably, the second question, unless it was the first question, is what are your rates or how much do you charge or what's your hourly rate or how much is uh, your session cost? And I will tell you with my sales background that if you give price up front, unless you happen to be the lowest priced hypnotherapist in your area, uh, you're dead in the water before you ever start because hey, that person is going to say thank you and they're going to move right on and call everybody else and then turn around and either reconnect with the person that has the lowest hourly rate or the person that sounded the most credible. Now, which category would you like to be in? Well, yeah, and, and some people, they don't want to see the cheapest guy. And so if, if you give out the price, and if you are the least expensive guy, you may be, might be in trouble also. This and is correct. So they're going to want to know, you know, do you do the service, how much, how many sessions, and then they want to move on to the next one. But you don't let them do that. No, basically, uh, 
I don't answer the question about price right off the bat. And basically, it's because everyone is tuned in to WIIFM. These are the call letters for what's in it for me. And in essence, that prospective client wants to know what's in it for him or her before they agree to book with me or any other hypnotherapist that they're going to be calling off the yellow pages or the internet mm -hmm. or off of the ad mm -hmm. or what have you. Mm -hmm. So when the person asks, what do you charge? My answer to that is I offer a free consultation because uh, it's important to you that we both make sure that uh, we're a good fit because it's like a two-way screening process. If either one of us feels that I'm not the right person for you, then it's best for you to find that out without risking any money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All I ask mm -hmm. is that when you schedule your free consultation, you agree to keep the appointment. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Would uh, you prefer uh, mornings or afternoon? Mm -hmm. Now, notice the immediate uh, question of an either-or. Those of you who are trained hypnotherapists understand that's like an Ericksonian double bind. It's an either-or question. Now, let me give you, uh, by way of digression, uh, an example of the important value of the either-or question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Years ago, when uh, banks were trying to circulate the Susan B. Anthony coins, which ended up uh, being a disaster, mm -hmm. there was a New York bank that had thousands of them that they wanted to get rid of. So the bank manager decided that uh, he would ask all of the tellers to get each customer when they cashed a check or got cash back with a deposit uh, to take a Susan B. Anthony coin as part of their change. Mm -hmm. So uh, after this had been going on for several days or several weeks, he had a meeting with all the tellers and went around the room asking each teller, are you asking all of your customers to take a Susan B. Anthony coin and change? And the response was yes. Then he gets to the last person who was a fairly young man and said, will you please share with everyone else in the room your secret as to why you're giving away more Susan B. Anthony coins than all the other tellers combined? And he said, certainly. I tell my customers, uh, we want to recirculate the Susan B. Anthony coins. Uh, do you want one coin or two coins in your change? <laughs> And by having the one coin or two coins rather than the accept a coin or don't accept one, he had a lot of people say that they would take the two coins and the majority would say one coin and only a handful of people would say no. That's right. People take the path of least resistance and yes. it's much harder to say I want zero when that wasn't an option that was presented, right? Indeed. So mm -hmm. rather than saying, would you like to take advantage of the free consultation, I say, uh, do you prefer mornings or afternoons? Okay. And if you do work evenings, you can say, would you prefer uh, a day appointment or an evening appointment? Mm -hmm. And what's better for you, Tuesday or Thursday? Correct. And so on. Yeah. Uh, you're a step ahead of me there, but yeah, absolutely, yeah. that's my next step. The, and, and you just make it like, okay, this is what how we do it. This is the the normal. Yes. You know, it's the, this is the normal process. We you've taken the first step. This is the next step. Would you you know? And that is the consultation. And would you rather do that in the morning or evening or afternoon and that kind of stuff? Yes. Now a lot of hypnotherapists uh, have a little bit of a concern about giving away a free thirty minute consultation. But as a person with a sales background, I consider this to be an investment in time. It's a closing interview, during which time I do want to know whether or not uh, I'm comfortable working with this person right. before I accept his or her money, because occasionally I'll recommend that somebody see a family marriage counselor or some other mm -hmm. professional, mm -hmm. uh, or perhaps it's somebody wanting to see me for a medical issue and I want them to go uh, to the physician and get uh, an appropriate medical referral before I do pain management imagery. That's exactly. happened a couple times when people have booked sessions for uh, stress management and self-hypnosis. Mm -hmm. They wanted to manage the stress that accompanies pain of arthritis. Right. And in fact, one lady who did that, after I gave her the free consultation, came back a week later with her uh, letter from her physician. And after four sessions, she was able to cut down her pain medication to less than half of what mm -hmm. it had been mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. her sessions mm -hmm. with me. Yeah, and uh, what I like, one thing I like about this approach is um, those who are familiar with our process, we do a pre-talk, and the pre-talk could be a big part of this. You tell them about hypnosis so they can make Indeed. an informed 
decision and you also have an opportunity to build value uh, before they make the decision. Is in the pre-talk, in the free consultation, if you please, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I do is I ask them uh, what goal do you wish to accomplish through hypnosis. If I have not already asked that on the phone and written it down, I definitely want to ask that or reconfirm it when they come into my office. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I want to explain to them a little bit about uh, hypnosis. And I start that out by using a suggestibility test, but I don't call it a suggestibility test, mm -hmm. even though that's the label that I got from Charles Tevitz. Because mm -hmm. first of all, a lot of people have test anxiety, and the minute you say test, uh, the heart starts pounding, what if I fail? That's right. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, a lot of people suggest uh, or believe that suggestibility uh, equates to losing control or being gullible and the most common fear of hypnosis whether expressed or not is a fear of losing control mm -hmm. and you'll find mm -hmm. this uh, validated by a number of different authors of hypnosis books down through the decades of mm -hmm. the 20th mm -hmm. century and in essence I say I'm going to give you an opportunity to discover the power of your imagination Mm -hmm. uh, there are lots of different suggestibility tests to choose from, mm -hmm. and even though I use that term shop talk with my students and with other professionals, right. mm -hmm. I don't use that term with a client. And then the one I choose to use is a variation on the Wahlberg arm levitation. I say to the client, hold your arms out in front of you. And now this works best if you close your eyes. I'm not going to hypnotize you just yet. And just take a deep breath. And just imagine that you have a bucket in one hand and there's water pouring in the bucket. See the water pouring in here, it's splashing. Feel the bucket getting heavier and a huge helium balloon or perhaps a uh, hundred helium balloons holding the other arm up. Now, I don't know what's easier to imagine, the bucket or the balloons. But just imagine that bucket's getting heavier and fuller. See the water pouring in here, it's splashing. Feel the bucket getting so heavy, somebody doubles the number of helium balloons. Now, open your eyes and notice where your arms are. And when the client opens his or her eyes and notices that there's a difference, I say your arms did not move because I told them to. They moved because you imagine the bucket or the balloons. And this demonstrates that imagination is the language of the subconscious. Okay, we, I've got to ask this. So we, we've got, one, one thing I notice is you don't assign a hand. You let them assign which, Absolutely. which hand because of your client-centered approach, right? Indeed. And then now when... so. Normally, in the vast majority of cases, one hand is going to be higher than the other. Uh, but sometimes it's going to be almost indistinguishable. When it's indistinguishable or almost indistinguishable, then, depending on what the client says afterwards, I may or may not use one or two more suggestibility tests until mm -hmm. I get a response. Mm -hmm. I will be persistent with the suggestibility test mm -hmm. until I get some sort of response to validate in the client's mind that when you fantasize something, when you use imagination, you can actually have a physical reaction. This mm -hmm. is important mm -hmm. because uh, a lot of times if you have an analytical client and you're putting that person in hypnosis and he or she is thinking, uh, I can hear every word you say, I wonder if I'm hypnotized or not. If they start fantasizing puffing away on a cigarette when they get out to their car, uh, then they just wasted their time and money mm -hmm. because a hypnotherapist did not properly explain the power of imagination. Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. this is part of what I include in the free consultation. Remember, when someone calls me, I'm not selling the series of sessions. I'm selling the free consultation. If they press me on the rates, then before I disclose the rate, I'll say, I'm neither the cheapest nor the most expensive, but my rate is based on what I have found is appropriate to help me stay in practice and to help you achieve your goal. Uh, it's, uh, right now it's $150 an hour, but mm -hmm. back when I first started in the uh, early 80s, I was charging $50 an hour, and it was a huge step for me mm -hmm. when I went up to $65 mm -hmm. an hour. And then I thought no one would want to see me when I raised my rates to $85 an hour. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that I actually had more calls and more clients at $85 an hour than I did at $65 an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was quite amazing to me. And then uh, after I uh, became published as a published author, then I raised my rates to 100 an hour. That may sound expensive in some parts of uh, the country, and sure. that may sound very cheap in other parts of the country. Right. Down here, $100 an hour would probably be at the bottom of the scale. Yeah, in, in, in Tustin, Irvine, and Orange County area, that would be really low. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, now I'm $150 an hour, but my graduates usually start out asking $100 an hour, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're worth it. Beautiful. Good. So well, I, I hear about two things. One of the things is, you know, answering the phone and not giving the information where they just run off to the next call. Correct. And the other thing I hear is you move them right into the consultation. And then when you're in the consultation, um, you're, you're building rapport and you're building value and you're helping them to begin to feel comfortable with the power of their subconscious mind. Have I, am I following you right? Yes, but there's another point that's extremely important both in that initial call and in a free consultation that I haven't had a chance yet to touch on, and that's the importance of listening. Mm. There's a concept that I learned when I first started in the insurance business in 1974, and that's that he who asks the questions is in control. Mm -hmm. So I asked the prospective client on the phone, what do you wish to accomplish through hypnosis, and endeavor to get the client to start talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if possible, I may even do that before I try to sell the free consultation, because occasionally when I ask the question and get the client to talking, mm -hmm. Oftentimes, they'll just go ahead and book a series of uh, sessions with me right on the spot without mm -hmm. ever uh, requesting a free consultation, mm -hmm. as this lady did who saw me recently for Fear of Flying. I discussed that on our other series. On the previous one, right. Correct. Mm -hmm. On your interview. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, secondly, when they come in for the free consultation, I also learned that you better ask why they're there. Uh, I share my successes with my students, also share my learning experiences. And years ago, this obese lady slumped in the chair. And, oh, I made the chair creak. And I started asking questions about, well, how long have you been dealing with your weight? Oh, since I was in high school. And she answered several different questions about her weight. And then I said, well, when is the last time you made a serious attempt to work on your weight? She said, about six years ago. And uh, she said, by the way, I resent people even hinting that I should work on my weight. And I said, okay, well, then uh, what made you decide to work on my weight this time? <clears throat> I'm here to stop smoking. Yeah. I was so embarrassed that if I could have found a hole in the carpet, I'd have crawled under it. Well, I share that learning experience with my students mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. they don't reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't ask the right questions and you make assumptions, you could <coughs> open mouth and insert foot. And even though this lady accepted my apology, I was so embarrassed at that horrible mistake mm -hmm. that to mm -hmm. this day I cannot remember whether she ever came back for a second <laughs> session. It's going to block it all out. <laughs> yes, I just wanted to forget the whole thing, and indeed that's what I did. <laughs> Except for the important part. <laughs> now, so what you, so you, you know, you're qualifying the person, you're getting them in, you're building rapport, you're making sure you're on track with their issue, what their, what their goals are and stuff. Yes. Do you ever have anyone that comes in? I have, really have two questions. One, one okay. question is what kind of mistakes do you find other people doing? Because uh, I know you, you supervise and teach other people. And the other is, what do you do when you, you get someone in for a consultation and they're just not appropriate to do the work with? Uh, if I don't feel comfortable either intellectually or intuitively working with a client, I'll suggest that uh, they contact somebody else and I will do my best to reject them without making them feel mm -hmm, rejected. Mm -hmm. In other words, as though I'm doing them a service by referring them elsewhere, I'll say, I believe that there are other therapists uh, who might have a better personality or style for you where you could accomplish mm -hmm. your goal with fewer sessions and less financial investment than with me. Yeah. People appreciate it if I put right. it that way, rather than saying, I'm not the person for you. Yeah, yeah, and and sometimes so, there'll be like transference issues, like you'll get in the yes. room with someone and you just can't say anything right. In that case, you you just need to refer mm -hmm. them out to a colleague that you that you trust and that kind of thing. Yes, and one time a lady was working with me. She came in for the free consultation, rather. I mean, she didn't work with me. She was going to, mm -hmm. and I sensed some discomfort, and I do a good job of listening. I don't remember the exact comment mm -hmm, because it's mm -hmm, been over mm -hmm. 10 years, but what I picked up on was uh, a belief that she didn't trust men with beards. So <laughs> I said, uh, before I accept your money, I need to ask you mm -hmm. if you're comfortable with men who have beards. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm comfortable with you intellectually because uh, I know you've written some books and uh, also the person that referred me to you succeeded. but. Uh, my father taught me that you can't trust a man with a beard. And I said, well, 
in all fairness to you, I have to tell you that an emotional discomfort with beards mm -hmm. could uh, cause you to have to see me for several more sessions than necessary right. if I refer you to uh, one of my former students. Mm -hmm. And she Beautiful. thanked me very much for uh, having the uh, thoughtfulness to refer her elsewhere. Beautiful. I'm glad you're able to kind of give an example of that too. So now, because we we got to, we're right down to the last minute or so of, mm -hmm. of this of this podcast, what what kind of mistakes do you see people making in booking clients or doing uh, consultations and this kind of thing? Well, I would say. Uh, the biggest mistake in booking is trying to sell a whole series of sessions over the phone because uh, in sales, when I was in the insurance profession, when I sold business equipment and I've had some other sales experience, mm -hmm. you don't sell over the phone. You sell the interview, you sell the appointment, uh, then you sell the benefits of your product or service mm -hmm. during the consultation. Uh, here's what you can expect yada 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 draw on other client successes that uh, are in your uh, experience bank if you wish mm -hmm. and you can even do that on the phone as well uh, when a person says well have you helped people uh, stop biting nails before uh, well I have several successes I can draw upon and if you don't uh, you can always contact your instructor and ask him or her for uh, an example that you can use and what I've done I mean even now when someone calls me and asks me if I can work on a specific issue that I haven't worked on, my response is, well, I have to tell you that's what I would consider the undiscovered country. So I recommend that we have a 30-minute consultation. Come in, let's discuss it. And since I have not worked with that particular issue before, mm -hmm. if we mutually feel it's worth working on, I will give you one-third off my normal rate. <clears throat> Or, and you could say we could see how similar that is to things I've worked in in the past, yes. and and see if my approach should be appropriate to it. I've right. used that phrasing mm -hmm. before also. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, some of these things I can't give you a black or white answer on. Mm -hmm. I make sure. the decisions intuitively, and quite frankly, one of the ways that I come to those decisions is I do my best to put myself in the client's shoes and ask myself the question, if I were the client talking to me right now, mm -hmm. how would I uh, want that question responded mm -hmm. to? Yeah, that's right. And I really believe that if you make this your number one ethic, mm -hmm. that a golden lot of rule. other things will fall into place. Right, just the golden rule. Be tre treat others you'd have others treat you. Thank you. That's a wonderful note to conclude on. <laughs> good, good. Uh, thank you very much, Roy, and, and we're going to continue you. with the next parts, and okay. here we're rolling along really well. Uh, but this concludes this part, and uh, I'd like you to look right below this video if you're on calbanion.com or if you're on the banyanhypnosismall.com, and you'll see any links to any resources or if you want to find out more about Roy Hunter. All those links are right down there. You can click and do a little bit more research. So keep checking back for part the next part, which is going to be why you should use convincers and how to do them. I'll tell you what. Those who use convincers are among some of the best hypnotherapists in the world. So I hope you'll come back and learn how to do that because it's really going to raise the quality of the work you're doing. So with that, this is Cal Banyan and Roy Hunter signing off. <laughs>